the first tutorial of this how to cut lumber in SketchUp series at the digital job site. We went through all the steps required to cut two by fours in this case into all these various shapes with notches and bevel cuts, angles, rabbits, holes, etc. In this part two, we're going to go through compound angle cuts, which is a little more involved. And we're going to show two instances. One for a case like this where you know the miter and the bevel angles. And then in the building with bite section, I'll cover how to create a model like this that shows how to let SketchUp do the calculations for the miter and bevel angled cuts. So let's get started with that. And we're going to need a guinea pig to work with. So I'm just going to take this group here and copy this. Click outside the group, edit, and paste one of those in place. Just move that thing over here. And this was a two by four. We'll use one of our techniques to cut this. I'm just going to take this end geometry and with control, move it down. And we'll just delete away this so we cut that angled end off. And then we'll repaint our projected texture on the end of this board. Going back in here, I'm going to pull this out two inches so that we're working with a two by six instead of a two by four. It'll make the angle show up a little bit. So now we have a guinea pig here and let's go ahead and turn the shadows off and put a compound miter cut on this piece. First thing we're going to do is go into group edit mode here. And the way I like to make these cuts when I know the miter and bevel angles is to just set up a cutting plane. And I'll show you how to do that. So I've just drawn a, a rectangle here of no particular size. And we'll just pull it up to no particular height. And if we want to cut this board, let's, let's put a 30 degree miter and a 45 degree bevel cut through here. And I should say that there are uh, plugins available for compound miter cutting. And if you do a lot of this sort of thing, one of those might be beneficial. But in this case, I'm just going to show a workaround and how to quickly set up the miter and bevel angles for this. So we have this figure here. I'm just going to take the box and let's rotate it 30 degrees. I'm just going to swing this around. Type 30, enter. And that gives us a 30 degree angle plane reference for cutting this board. And then by double clicking a single face on the side, I'm going to take the rotate tool, hit control, get right down on the bottom corner like this, and let's pivot a copy of this out 45 degrees. So now we have a plane that is 30 degrees and 45 degrees in relation to the surfaces of this board. And now that we have an angled cutting plane established, I'm going to grab this whole box. I'm just going to slide it down in the blue direction. Let's just go four inches so that this plane intersects the board. You'll see what I mean in a minute here. So I've double clicked to select this angled beveled face. And I'm going to take move and control and just slide this copy of this over into our board here. You can see how it is intersecting the board, but it's it's not separating the faces. To get it to intersect, I'm just going to drag a box around everything, right click, and then say intersect faces with selection. And now you can see that these faces have separated at this plane. So let's delete this cutting plane and select a line with a double click and delete that. And if we go into the wireframe mode with this you can see that there's a, a plane inside this 2x6 that we created with that process. So we're just going to move one of these, move a copy of this geometry inside the board. Move and control. I'm just going to slide it over to random distance. It doesn't really matter. We'll leave the, that wireframe mode and then select this geometry in between. 
And with those steps, you can see we've created this cut and it's a 30 degree miter and a 45 degree bevel. And don't get fooled by putting your protractor on this side and swinging down and say, wait a minute, it's only 40.9 degrees. I wanted it to be 45. The angle, that miter angle, or the bevel angle, I'm sorry, it's measured perpendicular to the cut. And I'll show you what I mean there. We go outside of group edit mode. I'm just going to put a box on top of this piece. Let's see if it'll line up on this edge. Yeah, there we go. And this is just random geometry, but if we take the protractor tool with this box and indicate on this corner, start in the blue direction going down and then swing over and index on this surface, now you can see our 45 degree bevel. And that's what your saw would be set at. I'll just take the back key to get out of that mode. Let's take these two guidelines out of here and paint up these ends with our texture. So that gives us a compound bevel, a uh, compound miter cut in here. If we want to make a, a, a piece with this angle on both sides, we can take this geometry and move it with a control, slide it down into our piece. While it's still selected, take the scale tool and let's get this to reverse. There it goes. I'm just going to go to a minus one. We can delete this end away. And that gives us a, a piece with the complementary compound angles. If you have reason to change the length of that piece, you can just do it by stretching this geometry. It works very simple. We don't want to take this group and scale it at this point without breaking into the geometry and moving it. If you scale it here, it throws the angles off, does all kinds of weird things. No matter which way you scale it, it's going to uh, distort the shape you want it. So that's the way to cut compound miters if you know the angles. I'm going to go and stop the video here and then go into a building with bytes section and show the steps that are required to build a shape like this and let SketchUp figure out the compound miter angles rather than determining them ahead of time. In the first part of this tutorial, we went through the steps to create a cutting plane and do a compound miter cut with known bevel and miter angles. In this section, we're going to go through steps to let SketchUp determine those miter angles by itself. And the significance is in carpentry, it's easy enough to go to a table or online calculator to come up with a miter and a bevel angle. So in this case, this is an eight-sided uh, box, let's call it, and there's a miter and bevel angle. If you go into a table, and it'll give you some degrees for this. Let's see if we can look at these. Go onto this plane and click straight out and then swing over. This is, it says 21.3 degrees. Let's see what this one's reading. And go straight out here and then index over. That says about 8.1 degrees if you look at the value control box. So if you were to take those numbers from a table and enter them into SketchUp and make a piece, the fact that it's not exactly this angle, I don't know how far this decimal would carry out to get the exact angle. It's not gonna fit uh, perfectly. With wood, there's enough compression in the wood fibers to make up for the difference. If you can, if you can cut the angles accurately with your saw, you'll get a good enough fit for wood, but in SketchUp, with it being digital, these angles are so precise that if you try to build this figure with angles from a table that you enter, there's going to be gaps and errors. 
And that's a long explanation to say there's times when if you're creating a model of this, you can just let SketchUp figure out the angles. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's just make a two by, let's make it a two by 10. So we're gonna go 48, comma, 9.25, enter, pull this up, 1.5. Select all these faces, grab an eyedropper, and you take a sample of this projected texture from here. And then there we have a 2x10 to work with. I'm going to make it a group, keep things simple. And now let's work on the compound miter aspect of this. Let's slide this out of the way. And then let's take the polygon tool. And do this with the circle tool also but let's just go here draw a polygon and we're going to go 36 enter and that'll give us a three foot diameter of this and then i'm going to right click that polygon and go up into the entity info dialog box and it says six segments i'm just going to change that to eight enter so there we have an octagon and while that's selected i'm going to take the rotate tool and click out here to the middle of one of these lines and then rotate it around so it's oriented along these axes and make it a little easier to work with this board. And let's go ahead and make this a group so it doesn't fight us later. Now we're going to take our 2x10 and grab it by a middle point. So right about there, when you get on the middle it gives you that rotate option for the move tool which we're avoiding. So I just want to center this piece up on the edge of this octagon. Now we'll take the rotate tool. It's going to rotate this up 90 degrees. And then from there, let's tilt it back out. I've got it in the wrong plane orientation. There. So I hit escape, get in this red direction, hold shift, and then let's just tilt this out. Let's go 19 degrees just to be a little bit difficult. If we tilt it out an even 45 degrees or something, that'd be pretty standard, but we're going to try to make this a little more interesting. So now that we have one of those pieces tilted, let us, we're going to rotate it again with a copy of itself. And I'm just going to pivot around underneath here so I can see these center points. I'm just going to grab the center, the center of this board, and you can see it's moving a copy. So let it go 45 degrees, enter, and then hit 2x, enter, and it gives us three of those. And they're each individual groups, but we want to make one piece with both bevels. And like before, we want to get an intersection between these pieces. There's no distinct line that separates them. So I'm just going to select these three, right click, and explode those three groups. So now it's all free geometry, but there's still no intersection between these planes. And while it's selected, I'm right clicking and then going to say intersect with selection. And now you can see that this has separated the faces. Let's go to wireframe again and you can see the, the plane inside there where it's cut on both sides. So what we want to do is make a piece that has both of these angles on it. So we're, we're able to capture this geometry. I'm just going to pivot around until I can select this little plane in here. And with a move and a control, let's just move it over this way. Let's go six inches. And do the same thing on this other side. Grab that, move it with the control, and move it this way six inches. We're staying in that board. We're not moving this around, just sliding it over six inches. And then we're going to delete. Actually, let's select this middle part. I'm pivoting around here to select just what I want. And while that's selected, I'm going to hold down Shift and select everything. And then hit Delete. That inverts the selection and gives us this little piece. So now let's make this into a component. 
and we're going to call it a bevel side. A bevel side, not a bevel side. Create that, replacing the selection with a, with a component. Now we can go into this component and trace these ends to fill in the geometry that disappeared and I must have missed something and I got sloppy and I didn't click the two points so it didn't fill the face and there we go. And now we'll take materials, eyedropper, paint these ends. We got a cool looking board. And now we can grab this end geometry. It's gonna follow this line. I'm gonna go six enter and do the same thing on the other end because we moved those. That's why we moved them a specific distance so it was easy to put them back. So now we have this bevel this block. And to create our box, bury those. We're going to take rotate and control. Get on our point of origin, which we set up, set up this octagon from it. And then when we get on the center point of this, it says midpointing component. Hit control. I'm looking for the little plus sign. There we go. Got control. So I'm just going to switch, pivot this around 45. Enter, and then if we go 6x enter, you can see it. it's going around the circle, but we want 7x enter to fill in our box. So what that did was created these miter and bevel angles with a perfect digital fit for this, this figure. If we want to take one of these, I'm just going to move and copy this. It's still a component here, so I'm going to explode it and turn it into a group so it doesn't affect anything else that we're doing. Now that this is a group, we can measure our angles. Let's go this way 90 degrees, and then from that point, we'll pivot out here, and our, it tells us our miter is about 7.7 .7 degrees. And that would be hard to hit otherwise. We draw a box on here. This is why I didn't leave it as a component because I don't want all this stuff happening to all our other pieces in the model. Just want to measure these angles. And get on this surface here, hold down shift to hold it. And I'm gonna pivot around, that's 180, and then we'll measure back off of that 180 to find out the miter angle. So we're on this line and we come out to this corner and you can see there it's 21.2 degrees. So those are the two angled numbers you'd get from a table. But in the precision of SketchUp, that miter wouldn't fit if you put 21.2 in there. There'd be gaps. So that's the process that I use to create compound miters when I don't know the angles ahead of time. So if you know the shape, the number of sides, and the angle that you want to tilt, this is a process you can use. I contemplated doing the same process with, with a five-sided figure here just to prove it can be done, but it seemed a little bit more complicated than necessary. So I hope those steps help for the occasions when you find a need to make some of those unusual cuts for a SketchUp model. In part three of this series, I'm gonna go through some steps for making curved cuts and curved plates for round walls and that sort of thing. So I hope you'll come back for part three of the How to Cut Lumber and SketchUp series. Thanks for watching.